Let's bring in Jerry Lowe, China strategist at Morgan Stanley, joining us now live from Hong Kong. And staying with us is Jim Rogers, chairman at Roger Holdings, live from our Asian headquarters. Jerry, thank you very much for joining our show today. You know, the Chinese market, or at least the Shanghai Composite Index, is up 47% year to date, by far one of the best performing global stock markets. How sustainable do you think this is? And do you think it's been fundamentally driven, or do you think the market is getting just a little ahead of itself? Uh, well, I don't think it's fundamentally driven. I think it's uh, liquidity driven, just pretty much like every other market in the world. And the key difference in China, though, the reason it's doing so well, is because China has a closed up capital account. That's very important to remember. Money don't go out, okay? It's like a sealed up lake. You keep pouring water into it, and the water level will keep going up. That's the, that's the only trick. If you look at the loan growth in the first quarter, that's almost 5 trillion RMB in one quarter, which is mm. almost 10% of Chinese GDP. So uh, if you keep pouring money in the market like that, uh, I understand why they do it. Uh, but that also explains why you know, the uh, stock market has been so strong. So it's, uh, I think it's a liquidity thing yeah. rather than a fundamental thing. You draw a great picture there. You draw a great analogy with the lake. Uh, Jerry, when you say about uh, you know just pouring liquidity into the lake and it just gets, keeps on getting bigger and bigger, the problem is that eventually uh, the dam is going to break and potentially it's going to spill over and end in tears. I mean, how long do you think liquidity alone can sustain a stock market rally? I think it's rather a global question than a China question. I think for China itself, you were already seeing some deceleration of liquidity. Uh, I think in, in April, you're seeing a, a fairly sharp deceleration of the new loans uh, creation. But remember, liquidity is becoming global these days. Money is still uh, floating into China through both the trade account and as well as the FDI, even though the FDI has been declining. So uh, I think, you know, at the point of when the central bank, you know, start to respond to these uh, reflating asset prices, uh, you are going to see a big problem. So for the time being, the rally could uh, actually sustain for a few, you know, quarter, um, you know, or two. Um, but, you know, eventually this is going to be a pretty bad, very quickly playing out boom and bust scenario for me. But Jerry, are you suggesting boom selling bust China? Scenario, potentially, Jim. No, yeah, I'm just saying, you, Jim. Jerry, are you suggesting selling China at this point? Well, I, I am. I mean, for, you know, for the for the next you know six months, I don't I don't feel comfortable you know uh, buying the market right now. I think you know the best at best you, you you take it as a trade market than a buy and hold market. I think the risk reward is n is no longer good. What are you doing, Jim, with China? Well, no, I, I as I said earlier, I, I bought Chinese shares in October, and November. I bought no Chinese shares since then. Uh, Jerry's exactly right. I mean, it, it, there's a lot of liquidity and. The, the market's up 47% this year. I don't want to buy anything that's been going through the roof. Like, and I think China's probably been the strongest market in the world over the past six months or so. No, you don't, you don't jump on a moving train. You wait for the train to slow down and go into the station and calm down. The question is, well, of course, you're, you're, Jerry, that, um, you know, will the tr Sorry, go ahead, Jerry. Yeah, I, I, I think, I think, Jim, your your strategy of keep holding it is, is is probably right from a longer term perspective. I, don't get me wrong; I'm a secular bull on China. I think you know the world is rebalancing. The the emerging market where China, China's station is um, is gonna is gonna take over the world economy. But you know, in the near term, I don't think China can just sustain the rest of the world. If you look at what's going on in the rest of the world, it's a mess out there. You know, China is is doing its best. You know, to you know to to escape from out. Of this uh, global recession, but I don't think it's going to be successful. You're going to see more bust than, than boom in the coming six, 12 months. That's that's the best I could take. You're certainly going to see some companies suffering. I mean, anybody who does business with America, or if you sell to Sears in America, you're going to have, you know something's wrong. And likewise with Europe. So there are many sectors of the Chinese economy that are going to have problems. Uh, as far as selling, uh, Jerry, I'm not as smart as you. I'm not, not as a good trader. I, I own China for my children. That I expect them to own my Chinese share someday. Because as you say, uh, and I happen to agree, secularly, China is going to be the next great country in the world, whether we like it or not. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Jerry? I think you're right. I, I, I think, you know, the China is going to be the, uh, the world economy leader, you know, across the cycle. We're definitely a, a across the cycle buyer in China. Uh, what I'm talking about right here is, you know, there, there's likely to be, 
you know, a near-term asset price issue. You know, the, the way I, you know, what I worry about is there's so much liquidity, not just in China, but globally, okay? You got a wall of money coming to the asset market and asset price start to stabilize and then reflate and they're generating a, a head fake prosperity in the global economy, which I think is highly unsustainable. You know, wait until the central bank hit the brake and throw the passenger out of the window and then I think from there we can talk about you know China's leadership, you know the sustainability, the sustainability of the long-term growth, et cetera, et cetera. Right now we're all on the same train, which is about to take a heartbreak. That's that's my opinion. Jerry, as far as the uh, near-term trading action is concerned, we have heard about new subsidies from Beijing for the purchase of uh, automobiles and home appliances really targeting the consumer sector once again. Are those sectors, uh, specifically the auto parts uh, sectors and the retailers, are they going to be uh, in favor today and in the near term? I think so. I think it's, it, it is, um, you know, a trading opportunity and, uh, you know, but when it comes to, you know, really how much, um, you know, money is going to contribute to the company's bottom line, I'm, I'm really a little suspicious because if you, lo if you look at the, uh, if you read the lines carefully, it's not really a new purchase subsidy, okay? It's a replacement subsidy. You've got to own a vehicle, uh, you know, to be able to enjoy that 10% uh, government subsidy. And when it comes to white goods and TVs, you know, any summer promotion is bigger than 10%. So I don't think it would be specifically appealing uh, to the consumers uh, that much. So all in all, I think it's probably going to pull up you know, demand by something, you know, 5 to 10 percent max. Uh, I, don't, I don't expect it to do much better than that. And remember, what this marginal demand is creating, the profitability is probably the lowest. We have seen that in the rural area, and I think you'll probably continue to see that when, when they deploy it to the nationwide. You know, Jerry, we've been talking a lot about commodity markets because, of course, Jim Rogers is on our show and uh, he's definitely a perma bull when it comes to commodities. But certainly key to the commodity outlook is China's demand for everything that, you know, they gobble up, you know, from agriculture to base metals to, you know, to oil. What is your outlook for China's demand for such commodities? I think there are, there are two layers of that demand, okay? On the fundamental layer, it's, it looks rock solid with this, you know, multi-trillion stimulus demand out there and the government's infrastructure spending, et cetera, et cetera. And the question is, on the margin, what is, how is that going to trade off with the rest of the world demand when the U.S. is still slipping into a recession and Europe doesn't look like so strong either? So uh, people could argue on the margin, you know, these demands are, are at best uh, flat globally. But remember, there's another layer of demand coming out of China, which is a strategic relocation of its dollar reserves mm -hmm. from the paper to the hard assets. And these hard assets could be broken down into the, you know, the hard commodities and the, and the risky assets in these uh, commodity producers globally. If you, if, you, if you listen to the, to the news this morning, you know, uh, there are two stories already out there regarding these uh, M&As globally you know, uh, in, in this area. So I think if you add on to that layer, uh, at least in the coming 12 months, that you know, these uh, commodity and oil demand um, you know, globally will, will look uh, pretty strong thanks to the China factor. Yeah, I wanted to pose the same similar question to you, Jim, without using your name in vain or give you the chance to respond here. When you talk about what you see in the future for commodities and you're talking about massive price rises for commodities, how much of that equation is due to China, do you think? Well, China sees the same thing that I do. They know that the supply of everything is in decline until something dramatic happens. And they're wisely, in my view, stocking up. Hey, first of all, who wants to own U.S. dollars five years from now or ten years from now? I'd rather own cotton or zinc. And second, they realize that the supply of everything is in decline. I think they're making a wise investment. Strategically, they're doing a wise thing by building up supplies if they need them. I mean. As I, as I said to you earlier, I think that the commodities are the best place to put your money these days, and apparently the Chinese government had rather own real assets than U.S. dollars, which are being printed very, very rapidly every afternoon. Very, very quickly, yeah, since we're on the topic of U.S. dollars, Jerry, sorry, Jerry, did you want to respond, or else I'll ask you, or else I'll ask you another question? Yeah, I, I, you know, I think I completely agree. I, I think you know the, the dollar supply looks like unlimited, you know, for me. And um, you know, you want to you want to keep playing it until you see. Uh, I just want to remind, you know, in, in the coming, you know, 12 months, 24 months, until you see signs that the central banks might might actually tighten. I think that will be the point when you sell the liquidity. Uh, sorry, sell, sell the commodities and oil, um, you know, uh, temporarily and, and wait for for, for for a correction. But before that happens, I think there's there's way to ride in that space. 
great conversation, guys. Jerry, thank you very much for joining us today. Jerry Lowe, China strategist at Morgan Stanley, and of course, our guest host, Jim Rogers.